Hello, welcome back to our series on financial math. In this video, we're going to talk about compound interest. Now, I think the easiest way to explain compound interest is through an example. So let's put one up now. So here we have um, an example where you deposit $2,000 into an account, earning a yearly interest rate of 3%. Now let's not let's assume that you don't have, you don't deposit any more money. How much are you going to have at the end of the year? Okay, well, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how much interest do we have. So let's take our formula interest, which is PRT. Now the principal is $2,000. The interest rate is 3%. Now notice it says yearly interest rate because it's 3% per year, so it's only going to be one year. And that's going to be $60. So we have an interest uh, amount of $60. So how much do we have after the end, or at the end of the first year? We're going to have the $2,000 plus now the interest of $60. So we're going to have $2,000. And sixty dollars. So, uh, not not much different than our simple interest. But now, where this gets different is the next question. And how much? Oops, spelled much wrong here. How much do you have at the end of the second year? So it's going to still be the the same formula, the interest. So it's going to be I equals P R T. But the difference here with compound interest is that you're taking the interest not off of the original principal, which is $2,000, but off of the previous balance. So it's going to be 2060 times the interest rate, which is 0 0.03 times our year. Now, only one year has passed. Okay, So you don't put two here, because that would mean that two years from your the previous the let me start again when you got your previous interest to when you get your next interest and so only again only one year has passed since your two interests got added on and so three percent of 2060 is 61 dollars and 80 cents so notice what happened here we had uh, previously earned an interest after one year of 60 dollars but at the end of the second year, we now have an interest of $61.80, which gives us at the end of the year $21.80. Cents. So what I did was I added the $61.80 that we just earned onto our previous balance of $20.60, and we have $21.80. But this demonstrates or shows you the idea behind compound interest. When you take interest, and here we had $60, when you go on to your next interest, what you ended up doing is you earned a little bit more in interest. And why? Because you took 3% of not just the 2000 but 2060 We took interest on top of the previous interest. And so the more times you compound, that's when compounding means you're adding on the interest, uh, you're going to earn a little bit more every time. Now, what's nice is, like if I had asked, okay, how much do we owe after 40 years? Well, are you going to do this process for or 38 more times? No, we're not going to do that. We have, fortunately, a formula for compound interest. Now, depending on when you're learning this material, say you're taking it in a college class, or you're just reading it on your own, uh, the formulas tend to look a little bit different, and that's just because of notation. Sometimes they use different letters to represent the same thing, or maybe they simplified it, uh, and so you know it looks a little bit different. But just remember that all of these formulas are the same. They may just look, look, look a, di a little bit different. So here's the formula for compound interest. It's going to be A equals, now this is, it's the accumulated amount. In other words, it's the amount of money you have after however many years um, using compound interest. So it's going to be P, which is your original principal, like the beginning amount. It's going to be 1 plus R over M, the MT. 
So this mt is an exponent here. And again, you may see this formula written a little bit differently, but that's okay. It's all they'd explain what each thing means anytime you see this formula. So what is we already know what p is, but what about these other letters? Again, p for principal. Now r is interest rate, t is time. Those you've seen before. So what's m? It's the number of times you compound in one year. So when you, if you were to just do it once, well then m would be one. If you compounded, meaning you add on interest, say, twice a year, m would be two. If you added it on every month, m would be twelve. So here are the most common ones we use. If you're compounding annually, m would equal one. If you're compounding semi-annually, m would equal two. If it was quarterly, m would equal 4. Monthly, m would equal 12. And so on. I mean, you can do daily, weekly. Just if you said weekly, uh, you know, simply it would be 52 times a year. If you said daily, you know, 365 times a year, uh, you probably won't see those. But these are the most common ones we use. So let's go back to our original problem up here. So we deposit $2,000 into account earning a yearly interest rate of 3%. Now we found out how much we were going to have after one year and two years. Um, so let's change this up a little bit. Compounded monthly, how much are you going to have after 10 years? So we have our formula, which you can let me write down is A equals P1 plus R over M to the mt. So let's write down what we know. We know p, which is $2,000. We know r, which is 3%, but again you write as a decimal. We know t, which is 10 years. Again, if, if it said 10 months, again you'd have to convert that into years, but we're given 10 years. And then m. Now it says compounded monthly, so they're not going to say compounding 12 times a year. They'll say something like monthly or quarterly. So you'll just have to know monthly means 12. So let's plug all that into our formula. So we have our principal of 2000, 1 plus, now the interest rate, which is 0 0.03 over 12, raised, I'm going to put this in parentheses, 12 times 10. All right, uh, so let's, let me actually take out a graphing calculator so you can see how to enter this in. Okay, so we're going to have 2,000, and then parentheses, 1 plus, it's pretty much typed in exactly the way you see it, divided by 12, and then you have this caret, which represents the exponent, but because there's multiple things in the exponent, you should put parentheses around it. So parentheses and then 12 times 10. Oops. And there we go. So we're going to get 2,698.7 and then we'll round to 1. Okay, so now let's go back to our previous problem. Remember our previous problem was that we deposited $2,000 into an account uh, at 3% and I just wanted to know how much I had at the end of the year or at the end of the second year. So compounding annually, which is what we did on that very first example, because once a year, how much do you have after two years? So we're going to have A equals again P1 plus R over M to the M times T. Now, the principal, again, $2,000. Remember, our answer should be 21, 21, and 80 cents. That's what we should get. So let's see if that's what happens. We're going to get 1 plus. Now, the interest rate is 0.03 over. Now, M is the number of times you compound. And since we're compounding annually, that means once. Raised to, now the exponent will be 1 times uh, T, which is 2. Now, if you enter this into your calculator, you do get 21, 21, and 80 cents. So we had the shortcut way, which is this formula, or you could do it the long way, which is what we did in our first example. 
Okay, so let's try one more example. So suppose you deposit $1,905 into an account earning 2.5% compounded quarterly. How much do you have after 18 months? And then we'll do another one where you, how much do you have after 40 years? So let's do the 18 months first. So our formula, which is A equals, so P, which is 1,905, 1 plus, now our interest rate, now 2.5% as a decimal is 0 0.025, divided by, now it's compounded quarterly, which means 4, oops, and then the exponent would then be 4 times the number of years. Now 18 months, you know, this is in months, so we do have to convert this to years. So you would divide it by 12, because that's how you get into years, and you'll get 1.5. So now put that into your calculator, and you'll get $1,977.56. So let's say that you had kind of like a follow-up question that said, well, how much did you earn in interest then? Well, the amount that you earn in interest if that was again the question, so interest, you would take, well, how much do you have now and subtract off how much you had previously, and the answer to that would be how much you earned in interest in that period, which is $72.56. Okay, so let's move on to the number, uh, what was the next one? 40 years. So we're going to get A equals, again, 1905, because that's what we start with. Interest rate still 0 0.025, compounded quarterly. So in our exponents, can be 4 times. Now the number of years now is 40. So when you plug that into the calculator, you're going to get $5,162, and we'll round to 24 cents. Uh, so if I wanted to know how much I made in interest now, let's see, interest, it's going to be the amount of money you made minus where you started. Again, I want to know how much we have an in interest, made an in interest total. So from start to finish, I made $3,257.24 in interest. Meaning that if you had left this money in the bank for 40 years, um, the bank would have paid a total or given you $3,257.24.